seem to be deeply rooted in their plan and actually and constantly um, doing the same plan. But I really want them to shake to shake it up to just commit to the mid jungle rather than picking a team comp. No more Renekton. No more Renekton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Renekton is one thing I I just want out. I just want, I just don't want to see it anymore. I, it doesn't work. And it's a detriment to the team because they pick team comps on the front line, and Renekton doesn't really offer it as we saw the front line. Well, we'll see here as we get into draft. It's going to be AHQ opting to go back on the blue side once again, as our band's going to yes. be the TF, yes. the Ori, the Nidalee, yes, and I like for them, this. first picking Uniboy Zoe. Yeah, that, I love this that. so much. Solo carried game one. Hopefully going to carry game four as well and push us all the way to five games as we were foretelling. Uh, Ash seems to be the go-to first rotation here, but yeah, with, with Caitlyn off the table, definitely going to see Ash from one of these teams. Just a matter of who chooses to take it for themselves. Yeah, you may even see actually the side of PSG opting into going into the center once again as they might have priority on other things onto the map. And one of that being that jungle is the Graves going to get locked in for River. I like I like the Zoe so much because personally so far in the series, heavy counter pick hasn't been the name of the game, it's been mostly control. And I think just first picking or early picking the champions that you want as a team that you're good on has so much value. And also PSG has shown their jungler already. So you get the counter pick on jungle and you can pick whatever you want on it. You can pick comfort, you could try and look for the kindred again. I think the Bard is also a great takeaway. Kai Wing was really good on it. Maybe Isera can show us that he he's better on it. Oh. Oh, and the the Isera with it. I, I love this so much because Wako has been having an off se off series with his positioning, and Ezra is the type of champion that can shore up those mistakes, and also offer more safety for the team to just ignore the Ezra lane or let it BMP scale up whilst they play oh on my the God. other side of the map. They can play through Ziv and then just watch them play through Wako anyway because this is standard for this series so far. Uh, that being said. Expecting some support bands to come through from AHQ at this point, but Bard, fairly solid lane phase into most of your conventional Callista duos, actually, due to his range advantage and the fact those big beefy melees that you see paired with the Callista do struggle into him. Thresh, bad, thresh, bad, thresh, <laughs> thresh, bad. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a must. Oh, the GP right. band, though. The GP actually drew a ban, you know, even though that Boris came by and maybe sold some <laughs> Otobi some bad items. But uh, nonetheless, oh, HQ's no. comp already is screaming to me that they're going for a lot of poke here. I don't see, I see the possibility of the Renekton still for Sims. Yeah, so. Yes, <laughs> yes, the, the GP ban actually tells me that it's Renekton. No, no, getting, no, no, no. Uh, getting the guaranteed first blood is not worth giving Hanabi GP, I guess. So, uh, yeah. There All right, out. Nice. You're happy with that at least. Could yeah. explore Nautilus, could explore TK if you really want to. Not a huge fan of TK Callista though. Go Nort, go Blitz if you're really feeling spicy for Kai Wing. Uh, get something that can roam and influence mid and really, you know, just try and shut down Summer Kong Yue and Yunu Boy's early priority. I think we've P we haven't talked about it much, but with PSG's team comp, one champion I would love to see HQ pick is Camille. Camille has so much value into ranged champions and champions that can that can't really keep Camille off of them. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> no, Sif, please don't do it. <laughs> no, games redacted, baby. Let's go. Uh, oh no, no, God. no, don't pre no, no, don't do this, don't do this. Oh, there no. you go. And we also you know get Kong Yu on one of. So, like, we love the first half of HQ's composition. We really love it. It's like, oh, yeah, Zoe for Uniboy looking good. The takeaways with the Bard from Kai Wing. Ezreal for Waku is being a little bit weird. And then they go with Trundle, which has been known to be one of Kong Yu's least interactive picks. And meanwhile, mm. there for PSG, Kong be going to go with something like a Mordekaiser for that top lane matchup. Yeah, you now have something that outscales and can actively 1v1 the Renekton past a couple of items. Uh, as well as that, you now have a jungler that can't actually influence that top lane matchup all that much. At this point, Trundle's just A, creating skirmish threat around mid, but Grave Syndra I still favor in that 2v2, short of a really, really cool bubble. And this siege comp from HQ is beautiful. It just relies on them getting ahead with a comp that will clearly struggle to find any sort of footing in the early game. 
Yeah, I, I just also really dislike the the Raritan pair with the Tron because <laughs> Tron is a champion. Tron is a champion that wants to cover top and not proactively pair on the early game, but they've shown that they just they don't want to play proactive around top. Uh, uh, Uni boy needs to smurf it up again on Zoe. Strong Rage side Ezreal. Yeah. Strong side Ezreal. Let's go. Oh boy. Well, I expect what? PC to take this game. We'll have to see there. Yeah, there is a possibility. PSG, with a victory here, are able to lock home the series to a 3-1 victory over AHQ. AHQ, if they're able to win this game, we get forced to a Game 5, which PSG themselves even mentioned, you know, during some of our documentaries we did with the team. You may have saw it at the beginning of our show. They're not, they're not, they're not, uh, un not unused to a best-of-five scenario, but they themselves, they said if they wanted to improve upon last split they wanted to be able to close out some of these best up series before that game five not having to get dragged out consistently time and time again and show that when they are given the opportunity to close the deal they can do just that we're going to go ahead and get ourselves locked and loaded one to two currently our series score if you win this here for PSG, you go up against Machi for that seed to Worlds. AHQ would drop down into the lower bracket and have to fight their way back up. They're looking to avoid just that as we go ahead and load on to the rip for our fourth game of the day. And back we are. We got ourselves a little of that that anger out during champ select. You know, it looked it looked promising for AHQ first half of the of the, of the draft, and then you know, Trundle Renekton. We'll see. Maybe is this finally the game we get to see the team play a little bit through Ziv, or is it going to be a one v nine Unibo show once again, like game one? Yeah, definitely need to see Uniboy step up, and also Waco just. Uh... Well, clean up, as it were, because his play so far this series has not been spectacular. But as we mentioned, and as we saw from that pause midway through the last game, not necessarily his fault. External circumstances with, with the Ill illness actually plaguing him. So it's you can sympathize with it. But at the same time, credit to PSG for identifying that bot lane is a point of weakness that they can absolutely play through this game. I saw there, maybe just trying to get themselves set up for a possible play. Ward, though, is spotted out by HQ, so they understand, hey, Unified and Kaiwing might be playing a little bit aggressive here. And they even show themselves in lane, so HQ will be able to keep themselves just safe. There's no wacky invades to start off our game for. Yeah, two big implications from this series if PSG do close on this game. One is that PSG will likely uh, head to Worlds as one of the PCS representatives should they make it through the next best of five as well. And two, first PCS best of five PSG will have played that they didn't take all the way to five games. And that's, uh, like I mentioned, to them a an improvement compared to what we saw back in spring, because like I mentioned, nearly every series, all every series actually PSG played, <laughs> that was a best of five, they went to a game five. And that included series where they were in this position, where they were 2-1 over their op opponents and were in match point position. And they still weren't able to close it. And that was up against Machi. I believe it was also once up against PHQ as well. So they're not unfamiliar with the situation. But I think for them, it's a confidence booster, especially heading into that next match where you can lock in your ticket to China uh, if you can close out this series in a 3-1. Yeah, definitely looking at PSG to easily win this one out, given the fact that comp is so much better than the mismatch kind of insane siege potential of the bot side and then the awkward kind of fumbling of the top side from HQ currently in this game. Uh, PSG now with their aggression trying to show you why they have taken it to match points so convincingly as HQ again just having Kongyue shadow his solo lanes to get them out of this early game. Well that's pretty much all he can really do I would say during this early game because unfortunately like you mentioned it feels like there's been a bit of a, a bit of a mixed match when it came to this draft and kind of 
uh, one half of the map wants to do one thing for the early part of the game, the other half of the map doesn't want to do that. <laughs> I think Volibear over Trundle would have made this draft absolutely fine. Uh, that being said though, Trundle's still looking for a gank regardless. Ah, uh, tank will get bubbled as well as the exhaust coming up as it was picked up by Uniboy off a of minion, but Tank doesn't even have to use any of its summoners to keep himself safe. Yeah, um, Trundle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Walks up into your lane, puts down a pillar, and then has to walk away slowly because that's pretty much his entire gank in a nutshell. Yeah, kind of unfortunate coming through from the jungler of uh, HQ, but Trundle does set up pretty well for top lane dives, and Mordekaiser, Three six may as well be a cannon minion. Can Ziv shove this in with a coordinated dive? See here though, Hanabi able to at least try and clear out what he can, but does realize, okay, something's gone awry. And Hanabi first blood, is there ever anything different? You have to ask yourself as he's going to get stunned up. Able to keep himself alive. Kanye almost dies, and that's a complete failure of execution coming out from AHQ. Yeah, actually a hold on the flash from Hanabi as well. Very, very good read by him to stay so controlled there. And Riven now not really on full damage control so much as just shadowing in case Ziv overcommits like this. There you go. Smokescreen's going to go on down, but Hanabi's like, I'm at 200 health. You could try and finish him off. We'll be able to actually catch back up, but decides not to. Even with the phase rush, let's Ziv back off. Is calling you actually already back to base. Yeah, Phase Rush made it seem like perhaps we could convert on a dive here, but I'm not entirely sold on it. Also, if you're going to play through Renekton, I think press the attack is the way to go just to further augment uh, some of that early damage. That being said, Conqueror, pretty necessary if he wants to 1v1 the Mordekaiser later, so I understand why AHQ have built these champions, even if I don't understand why they picked them. <laughs> Understand? It's it comes back to you know, uh, green tea and co. That that uh, that uh, coaching staff for HQ. They might have the big giga brain coming out. Meanwhile, though, Waco already back to base does have that teleport and has just gone ahead and picked up the sheen actually instead of the tier. So just wants to have a little bit more damage in lane, but not going to be stacking that up immediately as PSG with that push. Also with the river nearby, they can try and get a little bit of dragon control. But Kanya is waiting in the wings. Yeah, looking at the way this is scaling up, actually, though, around this six-minute Drake fight, you have Sheen for the Ez, Tier 2 boots for the Zoe, not a huge spike, but one that Uniboy is happy to actually utilize to its fullest potential, I have no doubt, after that game one. Uh, otherwise, pretty quiet across the board in terms of components picked up. Sheen, though, as we mentioned, beautiful point to fight in if HQ want to go for a fight. Do note, though, as we take a look back toward that top side of the map, do note that uh, Siv is starting to get himself a pretty nasty CS lead up in that top lane matchup. Almost 20 CS up above Hanabi, uh, which, uh, considering Hanabi didn't actually die, was actually able to survive that dive. Good sign for Ziv, but we've mentioned it literally three times in this series already. Every game so far, even when Siv is able to get an advantage, we just don't see AHQ play through it. Yeah, definitely uh, wanted to see Ziv be the point of focus in this game because Bard, Ezreal, such a phenomenal weak side lane, can just hold their own against Callista Nautilus fairly reliably, could coordinate three-man dives with unlocking Uniboy for the big roams on the Zoe, and then they round out the draft with a Trundle. That just means that we're now on the full utility kind of defensive play, unless AHQ set up for a really good three-man dive, but Mordekaiser, we're past level six. He turns a 3v1 into a 1v1, and it all becomes doom and gloom in the death realm, and we now see AHQ playing around bot side again for whatever reason. Well, maybe hoping that is going to be able to get his ultimate, but you do see that Kong has decided, all right, I'm going back to base, so comes down puts down a pillar and just says, okay, later. Meanwhile, River's just continuing in his jungle, just farming away. Yeah, River more than happy with how this is currently going. Of course, uh, actually credit to the Trundle for matching farm on the graves this early. Uh, usually you see a huge gap kind of build between them. I believe it's every three camps the Trundle clears, graves should clear about four and a half or even five. So, yeah, full credit where credit is due to Kongyue as River. I think he spent a little bit too much time trying to pressure Ziv or shadow his uh, solo laners to try and answer whatever kind of play HQ were making in their limited aggression so far. 
Well, it's, it's fair to at least assume that Kong Yu was going to try and make a play somewhere on the map. Again, AHQ, he's he's usually the catalyst alongside Uniboy. And with that, they are actually going to transition this into an early Rift Herald with Waku and Yasera backing already. You see Unified and Kai Winger on the other side of the map, so not going to be the case. And maybe going to try and use this Rift Herald top lane and then really force Hanabi to make some tough decisions. Yeah, you trade him Thunder Drake for it, but that's absolutely fine because you're rotating your strongest pieces around the map. Hanabi pretty safe from a dive. He can ult Isara if he needs to. Uh, what I do want to touch on though is that while you play this macrocentric gameplay, it takes Kalista out of the lane phase because she's not able to find the 2v2, not able to find the 1v1, and you're suddenly bleeding out this champion that does spike in the early game. Basically, bot lane Renekton on the side of PSG, There's... currently unable to use her strength. Oh, he got stunned up into the True Shot Barrage, able to get himself back to safety. You do see, though, Kanye is able to soak up some of that damage. Ooh. And there you go. First blood goes to Yasari. You maybe wanted to put that to Wako, but nonetheless, it's still the kill. Finally, the dive paying off, as well as Rift Herald going to funnel some extra gold into this Ezreal. Yeah, the objective one for one trade was absolutely fine, but the further commitment, the tower trade attempt from PSG was just clumsy because, of course, if the tower trades do come through, the team that has the Herald are going to outpush you. Hanabi stays a little bit too long, but you can't really blame him. I think he should have just booked it out of top lane the moment he knew his team were committing for Infernal Drake and he saw that, you know, there was a lingering inclination that AHQ were actively taking down the Rift Herald. And uh, uh, the reoccurring trend, as you may have noticed if you've been watching a couple of the games so far in the series, is uh, Hanabi, First Blood, uh, comes together. He, he does get the uh, the good old... Recurring trend of the PCS as a whole. Let, yeah. Let's be real here. He is say, he gets PSG's... The, uh, he gets kind of the direst mascot. treatment for the first, like, uh, first six levels of the game. You know, he just wants to play some League of Legends, but instead, a lot of resources. But he's able to recover. That's the one thing about Hanabi is he is on a Mordekaiser. He will scale back up when he gets a couple items, and he will still become a threat and also a nuisance during those team fights when he does lock down crucial targets on the side of AHQ. Yeah, my only my only concern here is Mordekaiser are relatively immobile, so Zoe and Ezreal able to DPS him down from like two screens away. Very, very difficult for him to close that gap unless he gets like a magical flank. And again, the range disparity between the two carries on AHQ relative to the carries on PSG means that if AHQ don't get hard engaged on by the Nautilus, don't get, you know, as we mentioned, sick flank from certain members, they can just play from a couple of screens away, have a field day poking out PSG and just really utilizing their superior siege potential to push this to a game five. Oh, tank gets caught out into a bubble from Uniboy. Still has cleanse though. With that, it looks like it's just going to be a quick trade of control wards in their own jungle. But would you say right now HQ are, are feeling like they're actually set up pretty decently? The fact that they haven't really dropped anything as far as the map goes. I might have just cast a curse to Wako at this point. Death charge into the dredge line as the ignite comes through. Even with the bar ultimate, it's too late and Unified finds his first skill of the game. Yeah, Wako a little bit isolated, trying to claim as much farm as he possibly can. Of course, had that tower first blood plating all funneled into him. So the Ezreal, fairly hefty target to take down. PSG get that though, and with that pressure, should be able to get at least a couple more plates into Callista as the skirmish continues. Skirmish continuing, River taking a couple auto attacks. That teleports from the top lane, gonna join us in on the party as Hanabi and Walker's Siv. back. Siv with a better flank, but immediately just gets blown up and Hanabi finds himself a kill. And he also picked up the stats away by the ult. And in comes Tank with the ultimate onto Uniboy. Unified though, stepping forward, gets the Ren to get the slow and picks up the kill. And PSG are able to find three kills as AHQ walk away with nothing. Wako dies, Wako TPs back in, and Wako dies again. The AD carry of AHQ just gets taken out twice in a row. The hard commit from AHQ, they tried their best, and yet you're taking skirmishes in the early game against Callista. Level 9 for the, uh, for the Syndra as well means she's dealing a ton of damage with those isolated Qs. Really, really rough because Trundle's not even mildly inconveniencing the Callista at this point. You need the pillar, then you can really fight the Callista because she can't move, uh, she can't auto. It's all really, really beautiful. But because AHQ stagger that team fight, play it out the way they did, everything just comes up in favor of PSG. 
And unfortunately, uh, for AHQ, I was, I was going to say, oh, yeah, this thing's going, it's going okay. You're getting some scaling, and now PSG, they just kind of come back online, and we, we just kind of see the issue with Civ. You know, he's able to get a cool teleport. He's right behind the carries, but uh, just stack CC makes his Renekton rather useless, and we're starting to see, again, the trend that we saw for the last two games PSG have been able to take on the victory. Yeah, desperately hoping Uniboy can just hard carry this one out. Uh, honestly, looking at the state of the game right now, though, very, very difficult for the Zoe to play. However, don't discount the range disparity that we continue to mention, of course. If AHQ can siege from a screen away, can get their frontline to mildly inconvenience PSG's attempted engages, then HQ can win through poke and poke Ooh. alone. Oh, Yasera with a great read, gets a three-man tempered fake, but they can't finish off any of the kills, and now Arene Gage comes back, Sib onto the back line, Kaiwing goes into stasis, collateral damage, not able to find the kill. A nice paddle star gets interrupted, though, by the Scatter of the Week. PSG are able to prevent any of their members from going down. Sib, though, still with Dominus, looking for a flank, now dissipates. Another Sky of the Week is able to land on Kanye Tank a little bit too far forward. Pillar was already down from the Trundle, and now Engage comes out from Hanabi, brings down the mace, pops the ultimate, takes Kanye to the Death Realm, and that will secure Drake for the side of PSG. Hanabi still on the hunt, you would see him, though, as it's going to be a Cloud Soul for the rest of our game. Re-Engage from Unified, finds one, found the knockup on Nawako. It's a double kill for the Kalista, and now PSG again find multiple members, only losing River. Isera almost carries that. Three-man tempered fate, multiple two-man stuns, and yet they can't pick up the pieces. The Trundle doing not a whole lot of anything. The Renekton desperately trying to find backline access, and the Zoe and Ezreal. When it comes to all-in, all-out fights, lose out against Syndra Kalista. They need to poke, they need to play from far away, and they can't with the entire PSG lineup in their face. And it starts off back here again, a nice ward in that pixel brush. Lines up Ysera very nicely, and this is like a golden opportunity, but it just feels like that once you kind of used everything, if you're not able to find the kill, like you mentioned, it feels rather difficult without having some pokes set up beforehand. The bard stuns were clean. The bard, bard stuns was so really clean good. there. Like, he timed it right off of the uh, Tempered Fate expiring, something that Kaiwing struggled with in that MVP-worthy bard performance. He got another one onto both solo laners. Uh, it was just really, really stellar play. And yeah, Hanabi, psychopath that he is on this champion, doesn't matter <laughs> if he's half health, doesn't matter if he's on quarter health, flashes in, goes crazy, gets in the enemy face, and secures his team another step towards that mid-game win condition of that Dragon Soul. He's not afraid to Q flash India when he doesn't even have, like, you know, the grass back to try and follow up onto that fight, but instead just says, hey, I got rid of the Trundle, we get ourselves our second dragon, and on top of that, PSG are also able to rotate that up toward the top side of the map and pick up a second Rift Herald and use it toward the top lane. Tremendous swing in pressure continuing in favor of PSG. Crack open this tier one top. Uh, continue to shove with it if you so wish, and continue to take skirmishes. Syndra, level 11, Luden, Sorks, all beautiful stuff. Blade, completed for Callista, soon to be the Runans. Now she's got the tower gold as well. Once Leandris comes through from Hanabi, everybody on PSG is going to be at their two item spike before AHQ even can think about a mid game. You also saw there, Shelly got herself uh, an additional charge and if you could just take a look, like PSG, like you mentioned, prime position, but also on top of that, like Unified, his series so far, when he's able to get one or two kills in the early game, he has been able to absolutely snowball out of control and up against Waka, which I think this is the biggest disparity we have ever seen in Waka's lane phase coming out of the first 15 minutes. The fact he's down almost 40, 50 CS up against Unified is... Uh, that's unheard of compared to the consistency that we saw from Waco the entire summer split. Definitely, and looking past summer split, after this game, we'll see one of these representatives, likely PSG, uh, make their way towards the upper bracket, which will, of course, result in them, well, the winner of PSG Marchi, and you PSG. have, well, yeah, Mar <laughs> PSG and Marchi will, uh, yeah, go to Worlds. Cool. Go Will we see HQ make their way there? Perhaps, but unlikely given this form so far. Oh, and I guess that kind of brings back to kind of the, the 
the ugly talk that we have to start having about, you know, our teams that are looking to represent the region. Where did what? that bubble What was that? Go? Oh, Bard, what? Bard, Bard, Bard. It was oh. Bard recall, I think. Or was that oh. the bubble? <laughs> Um, I don't know what that was. The, that, that's kind of now kind of our ugly question, you know, is with PSG, sure, they're able to show adaptation during these playoffs and they're able to be really good during best of series, but you still got to consider this team, how they do in those best of one situations when they are playing in a group stage at Worlds. Will teams from other regions at their top level let PSG play this kind of style or are they going to get exposed and they'll never get the opportunity to adapt because they'll get knocked out. Yeah, they even needed to wait, just chill, give away game one, and then ramp up. Exactly. Uh, that being said, yeah, honestly, it's very, very hard to gauge until we see them make Splash internationally, but you have storied names on each side. You have a ton of international experience. We even saw up. Oh, Kai Wing able to get the engage and tank now on a killing spree as, uh, like you mentioned, some of that international experience, not afraid to pull the trigger over the wall there onto you, sir. Yeah, for those of you that are just tuning in and are wondering who these two teams are on your screen when it comes to actual international experience, Ziv, king of AHQ, been at Worlds since like season four, season five. Kong Yue, Uni Boy, Mad Team 2018 Worlds. You look at um, Hanabi, Flash Wolves. Yeah, also Wako Yusara, HQ again. Um, Unified Kaiwing, the HK bot lane of last year. Tank on Snake in the LPL. It's all good stuff. These are experienced players. These are players that can make a splash if you give them room to breathe. We'll take a look back here. It's just good vision control coming out from PSG and uh, a gutsy call there from Kaiwing saying let's just go in. And meanwhile though, fight continues to break out. Kanye gets that smite on down onto River, just trying to get the slow. In comes the Bard ultimate, not gonna connect onto Tank as he is forced to flash away. Looks like AHQ were looking to force a fight as PSG, during that replay, were able to secure their third dragon of the game. Are now set up for Cloud Soul on the next respawn. Oh. We saw there though, Unified, Fate's Call. Gonna bring back Unified. Unified gets thrown on in. Hanabi though, onto the back line. Able to take out Uniboy with the Death Realm. And there you go, without the Zoe, one of your key carries, the man who's been consistent for AHQ this summer and spring split is taken off the table. A nice scour of the week onto Wako. He gets caught out. The unleashed power from Tank is enough damage to take him down. And now Siv caught on the wrong side of the map, looking to delay his death, but unbeknownst to him, he will have no say. Oh! His tank survives, and Kyanabi finds the kill. And Unify diving underneath the tower. A PSG able to find the ace. Looks like we're on track to another three to 19 kills at the 21 minute, 22 minute mark. Uh, like game two, just complete dominance coming through from PSG here. They get on the board with their win conditions. They snowball through said win conditions. Syndra went ahead, will just stat check you with a quick R to the face. Callista will go crazy in your back line. And well, you said, what was it you said? Like ambitious call from Hanabi there or like bold movement or something? That is name of the game so far, honestly. He <laughs> goes in, he gets kills. He does not care if you threaten him. He will just threaten you right back. Big yeah. man with the mace. Now for sure there, Wako has that arcane shift, but he just can't get out of the cast range in time from tank. You saw Kong you there. He just gets soloed out there by River at the very end. Unified's also on par. Uh, Unified's actually the one that picks up the kill and uh, able to dodge away a very nice Q that was being laid down by Ysera. And at this point, game is looking very dire for P, well, for AHQ. Your PSG right now, you are singing happy. It's almost a 7,000 gold lead at 22 minutes. We'll see whether or not Uniboy can find that 1v9 performance once again, but it's going to be very difficult. That being said, though, we thought about PSG moving on through the upper bracket, moving on to Worlds and whatnot, but I also do want to think about HQ's future, because, of course, if they lose here, they do have a couple of days of recovery, of rest, and that will give Ziv time to rest his hand, that will give Wako time to get well. And hopefully that means we see an AHQ that we saw in the tiebreaker that we were expecting to see coming in today and that we even saw a flash of in game one. Yeah, that, that's kind of been the, the biggest takeaway here is AHQ. We, I, I initially, and a majority of us here 
at the Talon crew felt like this was HQ series to win. We felt like this was going to be a roughly a 3-1, but it might actually just be a 3-1 in favor of PSG. And a, I find it very weird that we're seeing such a, a variance in performance, especially now consistently in the past two games here from AHQ. Definitely needs to think about how AHQ can claw their way back into this one. Again, Siege, Poke for these champions that are so oppressive when ahead are underwhelming when behind. Same for Renekton, by the oh, way. Oh, boy. There you go. River finds the kill. Hanavi's able to get out range of tower. True Shot Barrage comes through, and he's got a stopwatch to keep himself alive. And Kanye can't make his way past River and Unified. Meanwhile, though, PSG were looking for a flank alongside Tank and Kai Wing. It's just another member taken off the board. Another death, another purse of a Renekton. Yep, poison. When Zoe is farming top, that is your... Wait, they didn't have vision of Zoe being top because the wave was up there. Just very good spider senses from the side of PSG. Said, look, we can probably commit for this and commit for this. They did. HQ now completely routed. Eh, one more pick and we should see a Baron come through for PSG. Callista takes it fantastically quickly, sends the Braves, uh, and then that should be the nail in the coffin for this game. But it looks like PSG are looking to uh, just play it safe, wait it out, wait for the Dragon Soul, and then they'll think about making a big commitment for another neutral objective. Yeah, with that, that gives them the extra move speed, as well as that would be 20% cooldown reduction onto their ultimates, all good and dandy. And for AHQ... Uh, you need you need a misstep. You need a misplay from PSG, or you need a hero play to come out from somebody on your team. But at this point, hero plays may just get outweighed by the sheer stat difference of items that PSG have in their back pocket, in their inventories, already ready to go. And you see that Baron secured, Soul contained for PSG, Elder on the next spawn, engage through mid. Kanye is going to get knocked up, get snared down. Kai Wing gets a little bit too far forward. Unified gets caught out. There you go. That might be the play. Siv, though, gets interrupted. Not able to. As a three-man scour of the week connects from tank. Able to prevent HQ from going for a play. Yeah, HQ now trying to continue to push their pressure there. But unfortunately, all they can get is the Nautilus. However, at this point, getting a single pick is essentially what your comp is made to do. And it's at least something when you are this far behind. Can they crack open this mid lane tier one and create more room to find picks oh, with? Tank. Unlikely if this continues. Here comes Hanabi though, able to get the grass onto Wako, brings in Uniboy into the death realm. Sleepy Tom Trouble Bubble is gonna land, Paddle Stars there, but the mace is brought down once again, and this doe is gonna get eliminated as River finds the kill. Unified steps forward, able to get chunks off Civ, but you see a push via the mid lane trying to cut off HQ's escape. Yeah, no minion wave quite yet, so still waiting. We'll just try and reset, uh, ruin the resets rather of this HQ team. PSG didn't get mid lane tier one, then look towards the Baron pit and then really seal the deal on this series. And it goes back here. What looks like an okay play actually from HQ, forcing Tank to have to burn his cleanse. Unfortunately, he gets ruined there as Hanabi luckily even only gets one person there on that grass. Yeah, what a fantastic TP into the back line. Uh, and then, yeah, Uniboy can't play the game. Can't poke, can't do much of anything with the Nautilus. Sorry, Mordekaiser in her face. Probably same for when, when the Nautilus gets in the Zoe's face as well. Let's be real. And PSG now just looking to tidy up their play a little bit. Find a good pick again. Find a good team fight. And then just end the game off the Baron play. Seems to be the plan here, is now you got Death's Dance, as well as the Bork and Runans completed for Unified. You got pretty much second, third items online for PSG. Second items only now just getting completed for AHQ. Miramana has been fully stacked for Wako, but that's still a pretty defensive Ezreal, as he's looking to go into a Death's Dance, so not going to be doing a whole lot of damage, even with that Miramana fully stacked, as PSG are the ones to start off the Baron. Yeah, now looking at AHQ and what they can do in response to this, try and poke, try and find some chip damage down, but can they get it? Ooh, the bottle to delay. Able to delay. Does that give an opportunity for AHQ? Some decent damage. Hanabi goes down low. True Shot Barrage through the pit. They're not able to steal back the Baron as PSG are able to claim it. Hanabi onto that back line. Able to catch out Kanye. Tank takes down Wako. And two members of AHQ fall. And that might be the nail in the coffin. With Baron buff in hand, 
PSG can look for the base as they take down every single member of HQ. It's Yasera remaining. He's trying to delay the inevitable, but at this point, Tank is hunting him down. Meanwhile, the t team in top lane pushing for the base. Ooh, the Baron minions were going to get him, but then the heal from the Bard came through to save him. We're looking at the bot lane chase, but unfortunately for AHQ, this series is ended, even if Ysera's life is not. That's going to be a teleport. Actually, a back here from PSG, as they feel like it's maybe a little bit too early to end this off. But like you mentioned, Ace comes through for PSG. 3 to 20, that kill total. And PSG dominating once again over AHQ as they just need one last team fight to close things out and advance into the winner's final. Yeah, the bot ult delay here about as much as you can hope for. Not quite long enough to actually drop all the Callista Spears, unfortunately, though, so smiting this away would have been a tall order either way. Uh, actually goes down to River, so credit him for getting that one. Hanabi just in the back lane again. Really, really, really clean Mordecai's to play. Super ambitious, super brave, and then Tank just having a field day chasing down his prey. Ah, uh, there you go. Kanye gets taken out. They're just feeding bodies to them now. It's a 13,000 gold lead. It's done. It's dusted. Throw in the towel if you're an AHQ fan, because PSG are looking to bring it home. Yeah, AHQ, they draft a kind of awkward composition to execute upon, and unsurprisingly, it is difficult to execute upon. Mini throw after mini throw is just capitalized upon by PSG here. They take their lead, and they run with it. And there you go. Inhibitor Tower and bot lane is going to be taken. Super Minions pushing in through the top here shortly. A nice combo coming out from Uniboy, but unfortunately he's still going to get taken down. He gets bursted trying to burst down River. First Nexus Tower going to be taken down slowly but surely. Tempered Fate is there as they, once again they try and do what they can to defend the base, but Unified's too big. Tank is too big. They're all too big on the side of PSG as they're looking to lock in their ticket into the winner's final to go up against regional rivals Machi once more. And winner from there locks in their ticket to China. HQ, they have to make the climb through the lower bracket. They want to have a shot at representing the region on the international stage as PSG Talan able to take home the series three to one. And PSG not to be outdone by their regional rivals. They say, look, Machi, fourth beats first. Well, third beats second too today as we do upset our way towards that winner's bracket with you. And considering from what we saw of that tiebreaker, it, it wasn't the expected result. And I think maybe that's the thing for AHQs. They didn't expect for PSG to be able to rebound as aggressively as we did, swap out the style and have them play as aggressive as we saw in our second, third and fourth games. And uh, it was just kind of written home there. It felt like AHQ just didn't really show up today after the first game. I think where PSG was ramping up during the series. They were constantly playing better. They were adapting to their opponent, dropping the NAR in favor of the GP and the Mordekaiser, for example, against the Rennington. AHQ kind of stuck to their guns, but I don't think it's only the fault of the Rennington pick that lost this series. I think Waco looked really off, but I don't think you can give him as much flack as just playing bad because he looked off in ways that are unnatural to players because you said that he was ill and he looked like he was having he was having trouble focusing because he was dying to gangs that, for example, the the dragon sound was heard that the enemy killed the dragon and then dies to a gang right after. Those kind of things just seemed like he was really unfocused, and I don't think AHQ was the full power here today. This was just Hanabi going crazy as well. So yeah, <laughs> definitely need to look at AHQ just um, refocusing, uh, recovering, you know, rehabilitation of Ziv's wrist as well. That kind of hidden but omnipresent uh, affliction that we had kind of spoken about at the start of the split as well. And yeah, AHQ, definitely not the kind of result they were expecting, not the result they were hoping for, but definitely not a season ender quite yet. So still have a chance to claw it back and get into that world championship seeding. But I'll be frank though, if you're if you're Machi right now, you saw what the like the the previous three games here of PSG looked like. I'd I'd hope they have something ready and available. We mentioned that uh, 
with Machi, they were able to plan for their matchup against J-Team, and they still will be able to do so. There is a week in between now and that grand and that winner's final. So uh, hopefully they're able to sure things up, and hopefully PSG are able to replicate this success, and this isn't just a one-time thing in this series. Definitely well, will be looking to uh, show that they are able to actually reclaim their throne as the top team of the region, of course, PSG. Yeah, there's a reason why they came into this uh, into this as third, as the underdogs, as, well, yeah, I guess someone we were all expecting to get 3 one but hey, showed up today, really, really nice. All three carry threats across all three lanes really coming into their own. I agree with the sentiment, but I do want to be cautiously positive about, about PSG, because I also think they have shown specific flaws that you've already pointed out, but we showed up today as well. Like I don't, I want Tehanovi to stop dying early. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's, I think it's inexcusable, especially going up against J Team uh, later on, uh, possibly, where they or at Worlds where teams will play Camille, will play these heavy top lane styles, and mm. if you give give a Camille for example an early kill, it will just be really bad for the game state. And MVP for our fourth and final match here for PSG. It's going to be unified. He didn't get it when he was like 12-0-1 or 12-0-4 or something on the gin. Kylan got it. This time around, though, the Callista came online. Very nice from him. I'd say actually unified and Kaiwing had had themselves a really good series. Yeah, insane yeah. from the bot lane of uh, of PSG. But again, you did factor in they were the lane against the uh, the struggling lane True. of AHQ. True. But at the same time, their map wide rotations, their ability to be where they need to be whenever they could, was fairly fantastic. And of course, these have always been players that can two v eight team fights pretty reliably. Yeah, I, mean, I would give the MVP. I, I would share the MVP because I think both Unified and Kai Wing played really well, but you can't give a shared MVP at all, so in that case, probably good to give it to Unified. Well, we're going to go ahead to a quick interview with Hanvi alongside our translator, Patty. So I'm a little bit sick, that's why I'm wearing a mask. Okay, no problem. We have four questions here. Let's ask Hanvi. First question, for the game, 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 for the game. So this series seems like your team's a lot more flexible in team composition in comparison to the first round of playoffs and in the regular season. So did you guys make a lot of changes to your BP? Uh, so because we, we, our champion pool is a lot bigger, and we kind of um, knew that what our opponent is going to choose, so um, we made strategies to play against our opponent, and we all know that they're going to choose Renekton on the top lane. So in the second, third, and fourth sets, your team's been controlling the the game's tempo for the entire games. Um, after losing the first set, what kind of changes do you guys make after going back? So I think the biggest changes that we guys we we make is to ban off Caitlyn in the following games because this champion is too strong at the moment and we can't go for our team fights, so that's why we ban off Caitlyn. 呃，那当然也恭喜你们进入这个胜部的冠军赛。那胜部的冠军赛又是春季赛季后赛的老对手马吉，有没有什么话想要对呃马吉说的 ？So congratulations on getting into the upper bracket. You're going to be facing off your old opponent from spring, which is Magic Esports, your rivals. So do you have anything you want to say to them? 就希望 PK 不要再 call Gemini 上来了吧，我们真的能一比一吧。So I wish PK won't call Gemini the, or their jungler to come and help him on the lane. Let's face one on one on the top lane. 呃，那再赢一个系列赛就笃定可以前往世界赛嘛？那自己的心态已经调整好，要面对将来可能其他四大赛区的强队了吗 ？So the winner of the next series is going going to get qualified for Worlds. Are you ready mentally to face off against strong teams from the four other major regions? 我觉得现在还没有进入世界赛，所以都不能掉以轻心，所以我并没有去研究其他赛区的队伍。So because we're not qualified yet, I haven't been looking at other regions. We just kind of have to work hard to win our next game. 
。OK， 那我们非常感谢哈拉比接受我们采访，也恭喜 PSG 在刚刚比赛获得胜利，希望你们在今后的接赛。Well, you heard there, they're still not actually got worlds in their sights just yet. They're more focused on the matches ahead of them, at least that's what Hanabi had to say for himself. But uh, overall, it feels like the team has an understanding of what they want to try and execute. And like we've mentioned, if they're able to take home that one more best of five victory over Machi, the team will qualify for worlds as uh, we take a quick look back at uh, all our happenings today. Of course, we only had the one series, PSG able to 3-1 over HQ. It's not a great upset, but it is still one uh, kind of mild, honestly. Yeah, it's it's not something that any of the analysts were expecting from our end, I believe, unless Riku betrayed us and voted for, for PSG. She did go um, PSG, but 3-2, all right? She said game five PSG okay. was going to happen. Yeah, well, uh, I believe it was eight and six on the predictions overall for HQ versus, March, uh, HQ versus PSG. So, yeah, an upset of the smallest degree. <laughs> well, we're gonna mention here, next week, Friday, it's gonna be our winner's final for, oh wait, actually, Machi and PSG get a two week break. They actually have two weeks to actually kind of recuperate. We're actually gonna be starting things off with L3 and L4 Friday, Saturday, J Team versus Nova, and then HQ versus Berjaya. And then we're gonna have that lower bracket semifinal, which we are, I think, tentatively agreeing that we are expecting J Team versus HQ. And I think that's gonna be an interesting matchup because you mentioned there is a little bit more uh, diversity from the top side of J Team's Ogoth. My, yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, from what I know from J Team, I think they have a more diverse playstyle and a wider champion pool to actually play carries in top lane, which is something I feel like most of the teams in this region lack at the moment. They default to Renekton, but they don't really play as much Camille as they should, in my opinion. That being said, though, J Team is the team that yesterday we finally got to see the exposure of their mid lane champion pool, where Nessie just got three banned on his global utilities and then just got stunted on by mission. So we'll see whether or not Uniboy, who he himself, we saw some of his carry performances today up against PSG, if he'll be able to replicate that. Of course, though, those teams, you have to go through Nova and you also got to go through Virgia. Yes, and that is why I wanted to chime in immediately because I am riding the Bajaya hype train, <laughs> especially if AHQ oh, no. can't get back in form by the end of this week because Bajaya, their strongest, most surprising performance was through the bot lane. K2 is a beast relative to, you know, the, the fact he's on an 8th place team in a 10 person league, but yeah, he's actually very solid and i think that if the bot lane plays like they did uh versus alpha we definitely could see bajaya make a splash in their series versus hq i know zergoth you're a little bit more familiar with the bridge does he come up with these wacky theories all the damn time when you talk to him like i i've tried to temper him down he just he doesn't relent well from the times that i've talked with ibris it's not it's not been this wacky I, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's spicier than usual, let's put it that way. <laughs> well, we'll have to see whether or not Berjaya can make that climb. But of course, that is going to be the end of our playoff Super Week. Four days of playoff action. And like we mentioned, we still got two more weeks to go, as next week we will be having our lower bracket get played out. And then after that, we get to decide which teams are going to be advancing to Worlds. Again, Machi versus PSG. Winner of that best of five will be seated into our grand final. They are locked in no matter what. And then it'll be the loser there taking on who's able to represent from the lower bracket. Guestimations are currently, it's gonna be either J Team or AHQ, but we'll have to see what the, that is gonna actually be panning out. From myself though, Abriz and Zeragot, thank you for joining us for our Super Week of Playoffs. That's gonna be the end of our broadcast, and we'll see you all next week.